welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy, and this is a bonus Monday sourcing video. We ended up hitting three different places today. Um, got some fun bonus footage at the end showing you the, probably the best things that we got. Um, that being said, we went to a church sale. But on the way to the church sale, I suddenly remembered that there was a, an estate sale. So I said, ah, heck, we'll stop there on the way. A couple of miles out of the way, but no big deal. Random neighborhood kid needs a little bit of practice driving. So we went to the estate sale. Then we hit the church sale. And after we uh, did our sh other shopping and everything, on the way home, saw a garage sale, literally uh, six houses down from, from where I live. So we parked and walked down there. We got stuff at all three places. Um, and kind of gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that really is out there and also the reasoning behind buying it. And I'm going to tell you where I bought it at and why I bought it. Um, for instance, I took a chance on these over here. I don't know anything at all about them, but it was half price at the estate sale because it was second day. And these are all sealed. It's all sealed gift wrap and gift bags. And I think I paid, what, $1.50 for all five or uh, $2 maybe for everything. Uh, all the sealed gift wrap, it's from the 1990s. And then this uh, Minnie Mouse sealed bag. I know Disney stuff sells. I figured for $2, it's definitely worth taking the chance. And again, it's all for the 90 sealed stuff. At some point, I'll end up getting it listed. I'll put it away. Maybe I'll do it all in a lot. I'm not really sure how I'm going to sell it, but it's just one of those things that I knew was a pretty good deal to pick up. Uh, another thing that I ended up picking up was this comic book over here. Now, they wanted $5 on it. It was half price day, so $2.50. Uh, hadn't seen it before. It's a gold key. It's also got a paper cover, not the glossy cover. So I ended up paying $2.50. It's, it's in VG to find condition. Um, nice book. I looked it up after I got out of the sale, and it's probably about a $30 book, something rather like that. So that's a neat little item right, right there. Um, then they had a little bag of stuff. They wanted $10 in the bag, and it was half price day. So I ended up getting, well, this birthday card, I don't know, that'll just go away in some piles somewhere. I get put in a lot at some point. But these four items over here cost me uh, $5 total because it was half price day. Nothing special. They're all little booklets, you know, book of Bible stories, my mother's gold ring, uh, poetic gift. But they're 1841, 1833, 1842, and 1840. So if you have a chance to pick up things from the 1830s and 40s, and these have nice illustrations in them and all that. I mean, I've sold things like this before. I can get 15 to 20 bucks a piece out of these all day long, and maybe even a little bit more, depending uh, upon what my research shows. Could be a good author, could be who knows what. But again, at that price, $2.50, or no, $5, I'm sorry, $5, you know, from back in the 1840s, you cannot go wrong. Uh, first thing I saw there, which I thought was really interesting, they wanted $2, half price day, a dollar at the estate sale. Uh, which route, Great Salvation Railroad or the Ruination Railroad, with the Prince of Light being the president of this side or the Prince of Darkness being this side? It's um, a handout from some of the Bible tent uh, things back in the day. And you can just tell by the printing uh, that it's early 1900s, I would take a guess at, for a dollar. Can't go wrong on that. It's just kind of a, a, an interesting little piece. Uh, a couple of other things I picked up over at the estate sale. Pick this up just kind of to use. It's, uh, it costs a dollar. Exacto board cutter uh, because it'll work a lot better than the stuff that I'm using right now. This is sealed. It's perfect. Uh, can't argue with that. Another thing that I ended up picking up, this one over here is at the garage sale. Um, these little one-handed tape dispensers, which I use this small tape to like seal bags and all that. Um, again, keep your eyes open. A lot of times you'll end up finding supplies, and these are really cool, and I think I'm going to end up putting one of these upstairs because sometimes I need tape when I'm upstairs listing stuff. So now i got a thing of tape upstairs. Um, probably one of the best things we bought today is realize our fly sweater is broken. Now this is kind of an interesting story. When you're walking around the sale, um, I had mentioned that, hey, we need a fly swatter because the other fly swatter got broken. This was literally sitting on a wall. I think everybody had forgotten that it was even there, the former owner. So I just picked it up, threw it in my pile, and they laughed at the uh, counter. And they just said, take it. I'm not even going to charge you for it. So I ended up getting a fly swatter for free, which is funny because we needed one anyway. So don't be afraid to uh, just kind of pick up things that you see around. 
Uh, picked up a couple of things here from Random Neighborhood Kid. Uh, cost $8. Uh, looks like 1990s, maybe some 80s uh, G.I. Joe and some other figures, including there's a whole bunch of uh, weapons down at the bottom and everything. So when he's allowed to list more stuff, we're going to kind of search through this stuff over here and get these listed. So that's a good little thing for, for him in the future. Uh, also picked up, uh, they charged me $5 on this at the estate sale. Remember these from the... Um, the bubblegum machines, uh, but it's got the old style with the old style bills. I don't know if you can see that. It's got the old style chargers. So this has to be, it's got the old style Washington Redskins in here. So this has to be early 1970s, like 72, 73. Um, you know, the old Oilers when it was a blue helmet, et cetera, et cetera. So this whole thing over here cost $5, which was actually a, probably about what it cost back then because it was a quarter a piece to get them out of the machine. So that's kind of a neat little item over there. And those things actually do sell. People want to have the whole collection of those. Uh, pick this up basically because it worked and it has tags on it. Um, it's a Precious Moments music box. So it's the kind of thing from applause and it, it works. So that's something other that we're going to have random neighborhood kid list when the, when the time comes and he's allowed to list more stuff. That should definitely sell. I didn't look it up, but I didn't pay a lot on it either, so that should be a pretty good item. Uh, picked up some sheet music and song books, 50 cents a piece, took some chances on stuff. Summer 42, Morning is Broken, with Cat Stevens, MacArthur Park, uh, just a bunch of stuff. Trini Lopez, I've got a bunch of Trini Lopez autographs to put up, so I figure I'll put that up as well. Uh, at the same time, people will end up buying that. 50 cents a piece on those over there, it kind of caught my eye. It was at the church sale. Um, and another thing to keep in mind, too, when you're at the church sales, it's all going to a good cause as well. So take a few chances at those sales, just because you know the money will be going to something good. Also picked up to be selling in the future, a few other Christmas things over here, Rudolph, Sounds of Christmas, Christmas carols. So I know I'll put those up, and I'll certainly get more than 50 cents around Christmas time off of those. Did also get this, because... Singing Teenagers, that caught my eye as well. Um, I'm thinking I might end up selling this on Etsy because it's kind of got a neat little uh, picture on there. If I zoom in on that, or maybe I'll do it on eBay, but I think a nice zoom in on that, I'll end up selling this item over here because it's, it's pretty neat looking on that. Um, got a few other things here. We're just about done, but another, another thing that I've told you in the past, this was $8, so it was half price, $4. It's from Harvard College, 1958. So... I didn't bother looking through it as far as who any alumni might be, et cetera, et cetera. But something rather like that for $4, all day long I'll end up buying, it off, uh, buying for that kind of price. Can't argue with that. Um, another little insider tip, I'm not sure what this is, uh, 27 Commonwealth Avenue. But if you take a look, it's got, it basically looks like it's self-printed, so it's going to be like low print run and all that kind of thing. Always pick up books like this because, again, you can sell these on eBay by marketing them properly. Uh, you go on and you read what it's about, and you do a really good listing about it. Uh, this looks like it's about an address in Boston. So you do a nice listing on that, put a bunch of pictures up. Nobody else is going to bother doing that, and you can end up making good money off something or other like this, having a really good listing on it. Um, and I paid 50 cents for that, so can't argue. Another item over here I ended up paying 50 cents for, just because the books were so cheap. And it's uh, for 50 cents. I said, why not? The Jewish festivals took a chance on buying it. And again, at 50 cents, it's not much of a chance. Another little insider tip. There was a big pile of junky magazines down at the bottom. This was down in the middle of them. A lot of times what people will do at the sales is they'll hide things that they want in areas that they don't think anybody else is going to look. Then they come back the next day when it's half price and they pick the stuff out. So if you see something that's out of place, hidden away somewhere or other, pick it up. Look it up, or if it's cheap enough, take a chance on it. Because, again, a lot of people don't want to pay full price, but they don't want anybody else to take it, so they'll hide it somewhere it's not supposed to be. Uh, it's a, just an insider tip there on estate sales, what to do. Uh, a couple of other things picked up from the church sale. Anytime you find any of these oddball soft cover books, uh, EBC's The Crystals, Man Wentz, How and Wither, uh, a record of clairvoyant investigation, feet on the earth, head in the stars, heart at the center of the universe. These are going to be oddball books. They don't have high print runs on them. Again, as long as you can do a good job of listing these, you're going to make your sale on things like this. 
And these ran me, because they were soft cover, they ran me 50 cents a piece. So I certainly will make good money on those. Um, but again, spiral bound, low print run, pick those up. Nobody else is picking them up, and anybody that does pick them up doesn't know how to sell them. So you take the time to sell them properly, you'll do well. Uh, another thing over here, this ties into yet another thing that I mentioned to you to buy before. Got two copies of the same book, uh, both signed by the author, uh, Webster, which is a local town. And again, you can just tell it's a low print run kind of thing. Webster through the years, published by the Webster Town Board. So that's one of those kind of deals. It's got pictures and all that stuff from, from Webster. Got two of them, uh, $10 each normal, so $5 on half price day. You put them up, put them up for $30, $40 a piece. They will sell at some point because somebody at the local town will want these books. Uh, and a nice thing about having two of them is I can always relist. So one sells, I relist. Took some chan uh, chances like I always do at the uh, church sales. Picked up a couple of 45s, which again, I don't usually do, but this one caught my eye. Just Hang Loose by Ron Tisch, Life is Happiness by Ron Tisch on Coca-Cola Records, which is a Honolulu uh, record company. Don't know anything about it. it, cost me a quarter. For a quarter, I'm not gonna lose money on it. And also this over here, Crusader Records. Uh, again, it's a promo copy, Terry Stafford. Took a chance on that, don't know anything at all about it, but it's a small record label I haven't seen before. It's a promo for a quarter, can't go wrong. Then uh, I want to give a big thanks to the uh, number of subscribers on this channel that watch it that have told me always pick up local uh, records. So I definitely did that. Uh, these are from Dundee, New York, uh, Dundee Central School, uh, Steel Pan Band, uh, two records from them. So anybody from that area is going to want that. Bishop Carney, which is a local school, two copies of their records. So people will want that. And Webster Central School, which is another school. Uh, People are going to end up wanting that. This one over here caught my eye. I don't know anything at all about it. The Arbors didn't look like it was a very high press run kind of thing. So take a chance on it. Ran me 50 cents, I believe, records were uh, for the regular records. Took a chance on that. A couple of other things. And again, I don't know records, so I'm learning right along with you. Italian artist in Canada. That looked oddball enough that I'll take a chance on it. And again, worst case, it's 50 cents. And I always pick up sealed records. There were a bunch of the same ones over here. It's uh, Soul Witness, which is a religious record, but they're all sealed. And for 50 cents a piece, you just can't go wrong on that over there. I'm sure they're worth more than 50 cents a piece, and if anybody wants them, they would probably rather have my sealed copy. I finally picked up a couple of postcards over here. A few postcards, got American flags, got a little town scenes, North Diamond in Mercer, Pennsylvania. Um, got a Santa Claus card over here. Got an interesting real photo postcard that I got to do some research on over here. It's got a crease up on the corner, but again, it's probably one of a kind, so that's kind of a neat little item there. Postcards were a dollar each, I believe it was half price day, so it was 50 cents. Can't go wrong in those. And then the final thing uh, inside that I wanted to show you, and I don't know anything whatsoever about them other than the name of the company, and that's Kirby. Um, Kirby Vacuum Cleaner. So I picked up the floor polisher accessory for a dollar and paid a dollar for this entire box full of accessories, which again, I don't know anything whatsoever about them, but I'm certain it cost more than a dollar back in the day, and I'm certain somebody's going to need some of those accessories. So I took a chance on those at a dollar a piece, uh, which really isn't much of a chance. And that's the beauty of church sales when you're out there is that was just sitting there. Nobody else wanted it because uh, they weren't resellers. Uh, they didn't have the Kirby that it would go to, so they didn't think of being able to sell it. I saw it and I said, look, for a dollar a piece for a good brand like Kirby, I'll take a chance on it. Again, worst case scenario, it sits down in the basement, never getting listed. Best case scenario, I do get it listed sometime soon and somebody other needs something out of there. So hopefully that gives you a kind of idea about the different things you can pick up at the various types of sales and the kind of mindset you have to have going into them. Uh, again, a lot of what I bought here between the records, the Kirby, etc., etc., are things that I don't usually deal in whatsoever. The toys, etc., etc. These aren't paper items. But I took a good chance on it because the prices were right. And worst case, I know I'm going to make enough money off the paper to be able to cover it all. So we got one little bit of a video to show you here from, from outside the last couple of things we bought. 
And uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Do hit the like button, and we'll see so you outside. The last couple of things we got from the sale, uh, picked up this ladder. Actually, an eight-foot-tall wooden ladder. Uh, pretty good shape here for $15. And the other thing we got, if you look down over there for $3, is a, some sort of a, an exercise machine. Now, one of the things we try to do on this channel is provide a lot of entertainment and good content. And Random Neighborhood Kid told me that it would be really, really good content if I climbed up to the top of here and jumped down onto there and then started riding down the, uh, riding down the sidewalk into the street, uh, kind of play like Frogger. So I guess anything for content, right? The voice of reason, Mrs. Papergoy came out and told me, get off the ladder, you idiot, before you break your neck. So we can't do the great stunt we wanted to do. But I'm going to show you how this thing works anyway. Like I said, it's a great exercise tool for $3. And now special guest star, Random Neighborhood Kid, showing me how it's done. Oh, hey, you made it a little bit further than me. That's quality engineering right there.